Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Fish. Before we get into it, just a quick little bit of shameless self promo. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, you definitely should. I post sneak previews of upcoming demos and other random stuff. I'm quite active on Instagram, so if you want to stay up to date, that is the place to be. So close to 10K as well, which would be an awesome landmark. Also, quick reminder if you're enjoying the content at any time, you can hit the like button. That actually really helps me out. And with that, let's get into your questions. 老哥什么时候做十九年新的 Chevrolet Pro Mod 评测啊？喜欢那个 Dildo Pink 的颜色。Not gonna lie, when I saw this comment, I died. So basically, he's asking about one of the new 2019 Chevrolets, but Gilman translates to like. Bro, and then Lao is older. In Chinese culture, age is generally associated with wisdom. So Lao Ge, old brother, is like a respectful, polite way of saying bro. And then he immediately follows it up with. When are you demoing that dildo pink Charvel? I guess there's no good translation for dildo pink. I wonder what the hex code is for that color. Anyways, so the one I think he's talking about is the 2019 Pro Mod DK 24H H 2. CM Charvel taking pointers from Ibanez. It comes in chlorine burst with a quilted maple veneer, three tone sunburst, gloss black, matte blue frost, and satin burgundy mist, aka. Dildo pink. I really hope the dildo is okay to say on YouTube. Otherwise, I am definitely getting demonetized. Spec-wise, it's almost identical to the Shell Pink Pro Mod DK 24 HSS that I demoed a few weeks back. Dinky body made of alder, a caramelized maple bolt-on neck with graphite reinforcement. Caramelized fingerboard with a 12 to 16 inch compound radius and rolled edges. Spoke wheel truss rod adjustment, lumen lay side dots, locking Charvel tuners, a custom Goto two point tremolo, and Seymour Duncan pickups. Now this being the HH version though, it's got two humbuckers. Like the HSS version, it keeps the Duncan SH10 full shred in the bridge position, and then interestingly. It's got an Elnico 2 Pro APH1 in the neck. It's a very uncommon pickup combination. It almost seems like it would be a mismatch with the super high output full shred and then the mellow low output APH1. But maybe that's what they're going for: maximum versatility. Who knows? As I said, it's uncommon, and uncommon is interesting. There's also a little two-way toggle to switch between series and parallel wiring, which I definitely think more guitars should come with. I love parallel for cleans. It sounds kind of like a coil split with a little lower output, but no hum. That shell pink Chevelle. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll leave a link in the cards. Such a good guitar. I was so close to keeping it, but I just can't justify owning more guitars right now. I'm trying to sell a few, so I still might pick up a Pro Mod. Right now, I'm just having a real tough time choosing which one should go. So we'll see. Point is, I loved that guitar, so yes, I am down to demo more Charvel. But I'm not sure whether it would be this one because really, it is so similar to the HSS version. You just have a different neck pickup, the ability to toggle series and parallel, and of course, dildo pink instead of shell pink. But feel and playability. I mean, there's always variation between individual units, but overall, it should be nearly identical. I don't know how much new, relevant information I can really add to that conversation. So I'm down to demo it because I'm sure I'll love it, but it might be more useful to showcase another model. Like there's the new Angel Vivaldi signature. It's a little more expensive, but it's also a seven-string Charvel. It's got a basswood body, bolt-on maple neck with graphite reinforcement, a custom neck profile, compound fingerboard radius with rolled edges. Goto tremolo and Charvel locking tuners. Then for pickups, it's got Demarzio Air Norton sevens. So shares a lot of the same features, but maybe isn't as good value for money as the Pro Mod. But it's a seven-string Charvel with gold pickups. And then the other one I get asked about a lot is Joe Zupanlier. I don't know. I don't speak French. Joe from Gajira's signature. It's a Sandima style too, so like a Telecaster type thing. He has a USA version, which goes for twenty-seven hundred dollars. But the one that I get requests for is the six hundred dollar MIM version. It's got a mahogany body, mahogany bolt-on neck, ebony fingerboard with the compound radius and rolled edges. Duncan designed pickups, which. Not gonna lie, never that excited to see. But what's cool is that it's got a tunematic style bridge and stop bar tailpiece. So it's kind of like a Les Paul in Tele form. Those are my two favorite shapes. I'm so down for that.、So、definitely more Charvel. This is where I'll throw it to you. So do you want to see the Angel Vivaldi signature, the Joe the Gajira Joe signature, or Dildo Pink? Poll in the top right. Having the best gear doesn't make me play better, but damn it, I look good playing badly. Relatable. Yes, but did you see the new Solar single cut? Just when you think a meme is on its way out. So Ola England recently released a new video showing off some new guitars. I hadn't even seen the video yet before you guys started blowing up my phone 
that there were three brand new Solar single cuts to see. Alright, so what do we have? There's a new GC 2.6 TB. It's essentially the same guitar that I demoed, but in trans black instead of trans red. Carved Swamp Ash body with a maple neck and Duncan Solar pickups for the core Solar single cut experience. Sounds great, and I've said it in a couple of videos since, but it's got one of the most elegant and comfortable designs for upper fret access. Like, it makes the $3,000 Gibson Les Paul Modern seem like an ancient relic. Then there's the GC 1.6 in carbon matte. The ones are the higher end models, so it's a little pricier, but also comes with stainless steel frets, lumen lays, and an Evertune bridge. Same pickups with an alder body and maple neck. This guitar comes in at $9.99, which yes, isn't an impulse buy, but it's also a guitar that comes stock with an Evertune for technically just under $1,000. That is insane. I mean, no other brand even gets close to that price for an Evertune equipped guitar. And I cannot say enough about how much I love the Evertune tech. My Hello Kitty legitimately probably gets the most playing time out of any guitar for songwriting because I know when I pick it up, it's gonna be perfectly in tune with perfect intonation and with perfect string tension. And it'll stay that way for the entire tracking session. I mean, in terms of convenience, it's unbeatable. And then the last one is by far the most talked about. It's the G1 1.6T, T standing for traditional in flame solar amber burst. For $8.99, it's part of the one series, so it's got stainless steel frets, glow in the dark inlays. This is the only guitar out of the entire range to have covered Duncan Solar pickups, which is pretty sick, so I kind of love it. Specifically, its attitude. Obviously, the finish is more traditional, it's got flashy gold hardware instead of the more subdued colors found in the rest of the lineup. But aesthetics are the only thing that Ola's changed. Everything else is unapologetically solar. He could have put in vintage style tuners, blocker trapezoid inlays, a 3x3 headstock, maybe more rock style pickups. But he's like, nope, maybe the colors are a bit different, but this is a solar single cut. Love it. So that's my feeling, but what do you guys think? Love it as well. Total abomination. Pull in the top right. Before we get into the last question, I want to give a shout out to Tabor Treener. I hope I pronounced that right, and the rest of the amazing patrons for making this content possible. If you want to directly support what I do as well with the honest reviews and coverage, you can join the Patreon community through the link below and get some awesome bonus perks. I know people have asked me, is there any lower tier? Because on a month where I'm productive, it can add up. You can actually set a limit, so even if it's just $1 a month, like the cost of a bag of Doritos, I really appreciate your support. What do you think about the Fishman Kill Switch Engage set for use in a one and only guitar? I mean, yeah, that's a great option. Honestly, none of the Fluence sets that I've tried so far have been bad options. So that's the Classic set, the Modern set, the KSEs, and the Adlers. They've got the tone I like, and the clarity makes them an absolute dream to track demos with. The KSEs in particular are interesting because they were the first ones to include the third single coil voice. And it's an actual voice that they engineered, it's not a coil split, so you don't have those associated disadvantages. No hum, no volume drop, stuff like that, so you can seamlessly transition in the middle of a song live. Then the other two voices sound great as well, you've got an active sound in voice 1 and then KSC's preferred passive sound in voice 2. The active sound is actually also different from the active sound found in the latest revision of the modern set. So I'm not sure if you're aware, but every so often Fishman actually releases new revisions of their Fluence pickups. For example, when I demoed the classic set a couple of years ago, it had the two voices and a high frequency tilt option. But with the latest version, the HF tilt option has now been removed in favor of the same single coil voice found in the KSEs. The moderns haven't changed that much in terms of features, but they have gone through incremental revoicings. Mostly on the active voice, if I recall call correctly from what Ken Susi told me. So the moderns that are sold today actually sound quite different from the ones that were originally released to market, but the originals are the ones that the guys in KSE preferred, so that's what's in their signature set. Just so happens Boss sent me this Katana 100 head tryout, haven't done that yet, I guess I'll take this opportunity to break it out. I'll just play a couple riffs for you here versus the modern. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So yeah, I've got a full demo and review of the KSE setup if you wanna check that out where I go into more detail. But bottom line, if you're going for maximum fluence versatility in one guitar, the original active, passive, and single coil voices make the KSE a really good choice. Honestly though, tone-wise, the Adler set is still my pick. Now it's time for the high praise of the week. Wow, fuck you. I was gonna get this guitar, but now since you have it, I'm debating it. Dot, 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 since you suck at guitar. You know, that's an interesting sponsorship model. With testimonies like that, can I get paid to not play a company's guitars? And that'll do it for this week's episode of Ask a Fish. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and hit the like button, leave your comments and your questions down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so that way YouTube lets you know every time I've uploaded a new video. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.